The thing I want to point out is the installation. All right? If you get out there and you see this guy tilted this way, what's happening? What's going to happen? What do you think? And the light up the gas. Yeah, the heat's going to ride back. If you have a tilted here, you bet you that tilted is going to get burned out. If you have a hole, you bet you're going to start melting that hole. When you get out there, take a look there, make sure it's at least one to three degrees bent downward. And this hole doesn't come back out and kind of tie to the chain. <laughs> make sure it goes away from the hot spot. Kind of like the hot spot. You know, the heat rises up. So anything above here should be a metal chain, should be a rubber hole that's going back out. Right? So, as you'll see, there's a bend on the front of that heater. That vents off the excess coming out of it. But I do that, I see that a lot. I go out to these farms and that, that hose is, is looped back over there and, and, it's, and it's sit tied to that chain up to the, up to the seat. And that is a that is a real no. I mean, with the way insurance is anymore, and especially insurance up here in Minnesota and the fires we've had over the past few years, uh, you don't want to get caught doing that. Your insurance guy will have a real time with it to see you doing that. So you see that. Put, the, put that thing off and reset that thing. Drop it back on the way, but away from the hot dog. And, and if you got gas pipes, people coming out there to, to, to do a to convert a finished bar over for me to finish, you know, tell him not to have that drop right above that easy. Have it a couple feet over to the back. Okay? All right, so we're going to talk about the components. You got your, your body, the aluminum body. Some may call it elbow, some call it aluminum, aluminum body. You have the two orifices inside. Now the the seat design. You guys might talk about some of you guys might talk the old one. The little pressure switch on top with the stainless steel tubing. That's the old design. Uh, that's the seat design. Yes, there is two orifices in there, but those two orifices are two different numbers. You got a point, uh, you got a 0 .44 millimeter and a 0 .42 millimeter on the seat design. Right. On a D design, it doesn't have that pressure switch on top. The pressure switch is actually incorporated right in here. All right. So the orifice, the two orifices inside it are the same. They're both 44, 44 millimeter. So what you have a D design, you can sell a little grab cap. You only need to keep one of those inventory, 44, 44 millimeter. If you have the one with the pressure switch, the thing with the steel tubing, Gotta make sure you have one at 44 and one at 42. This little mechanism, pushing down on the pilot. We used to be able to stock these guys from our previous vendors. Not from our new suppliers. Okay? They will not sell up this. So if you get one where you try to like the you you place the thermocouple, push it down, and it's like oh the pilot keeps going up. Yeah, it, it, it's that metal, it's that that uh, that plunger in there. That thing has gone bad, and you just have to replace the whole valve. Okay. Now, one thing when you guys replace this, this is a straight thread. All right. So we lock tight it when we put the arms on the back. So when you go to take it off. Don't just try to take it off by force. You're going to break that aluminum body, that soft aluminum here. You need to heat it up a little bit to soften that liquid, that liquid lock time. Once you soften it off, you can move that without breaking it off. That's one thing that we've been getting a lot of people coming in, trying to take the valve off, either going from a modulating one uh, with a zone counter control to an individual control where the thermostat is mounted right to the unit. And they try to replace it. They take it off and they break the thumb without realizing there's actually a lock tire on it. So that's one thing you guys want to do is you guys want to replace it with the valve. You have to replace the whole valve. Make sure you soften up this with a uh, little lighter. Soften up the metal, uh, not the metal. Soften up the lock tire, the liquid lock tire. Once you soften that out, you just pull that out. We need a lock tire. It will come with a, yeah, the valve will come with a pack, a little pack of lock tire. Right, so those green lock I've got the number is, but the green liquid lock type. This valve should never have to be adjusted. It's three steps on the factory. You shouldn't have to take the valve with lock tie down. You shouldn't have to take the valve and make any adjustment. 
Right? So that you shouldn't have to do. Same with the uh, hose towel. Same with the, the C design with the pressure switch on top, followed by a tubing. You shouldn't have to make any adjustment on that. Too, with, uh, with uh, these nut drivers that they've got nowadays on the old style, you had to kind of grind down the nut driver, get it thin enough where you get the energy forks is all sorry. Uh, with, with this one, you don't have to do that. There, there's enough space. I'll pass this around. Just be very careful when you put it back in, though. It's soft metal with the brass, so you have to lock up. Yeah, if you go to it and all of a sudden you snap it off, now you're in trouble. Now you can't get that brass off. So, just get a nice and snug, get it straight, and get it nice and snug in there. You'll feel it when it's stuck in tight. So, again, it's a very fine thread in there, and it's just a male grass. Grass is Alright, from the body, we got our thermocouple. Alright, now, you're seeing this design out there. You guys will be seeing this design out there. Alright, we're going to go with this one. We got some uh, coating back here. Much better job with breaking off here. So then once it breaks off here, you're done. You have to replace the whole thermocouple here. So the newer thermocouple has a, did a better job of sealing and coating that. How many of you guys have replaced this like hockey? The thermocouple. We don't really work out it too much. Okay, we're up to but sometimes we get called off the of that and say the not working. So maybe we're working with the mod on the stone control and just making sure there's enough pressure. The one on heaters that aren't working, we can identify it at the first time we gotta get it fixed, but we're not really doing much of this. Yeah, I'm talking about zone panels real quick. Something we will have in the future. All our zone panels will have pressure. Correct. Correct. Right at the end with that oval and that draft oval with that plug in. It will be a, a, uh, a pressure cable. So actually it will be a little different than what we have to have here. Right. Good. But it will be a deal where if somebody calls you from farm, because I don't know what's wrong with the zone panel. You can say, walk the zone panel, do this with the valve, and look in there and tell, and tell me what your pressure is. That, that's going to eliminate a little trip in So, So, the original thermal couple is that it follows through the whole length one way. Once you blow it, you have to replace it. This one has an auto reset, the same with the new one that we're getting, it's an auto reset. Once, for some reason, if the plane comes back and heats up here, that's done to this, it trips the, the high temperature uh, breaker here, pretty much a fuse, right? But it will reset once it cools off. And then you should be able to take, uh, you know, run again, find out what any block is. You know, do we have a bad gasket or no gasket in here? You know, the cone, you know, do we have a blockage in the cone, in the cone here? All in that flame to kind of travel back. That's where you can take a look at it. I forgot to mention the uh, body has a plate, all right? That press plate is pressed uh, from the factory. So, you know, if you get one out there and it doesn't look like it's all the way in, somebody try to remove it or somebody did a conversion and then push that all the way in. So, we went away from sending that plate out into just giving you the whole body with that press fitted in. Alright, so the natural gas is smaller, the LP is bigger. Alright, so take a look at that when you get up there too. Uh, 22 and I think the other one's 14. So, you make sure you have the proper the plate for the proper gas. Follow there, you got your red tube. The black tube. That's where the air flow flow there, go there, meet up with your gas, open uh, for combustion, right in this chamber. Alright, a lot of maintenance, you know, go through it and clean them. Blow it up, compress the air blow through here. Uh, we prefer compressed air, but if you have to, if it's really bad, and you need to really wash it out on a modulating unit, you can run garden hole and water through here. Alright, so run it through here, let it drain out until you start getting a nice clear water coming out, shake it off. Okay? Once you once you use the water, once you shake it off, fire it up right away. Fire it up so it's the heat burns off the water so you don't have oxidation happening. Okay? But well, we prefer here. 
If you can get by with air, that's the first thing you want to do. You can compress air, lower down, lift it up, blow back this way. So it works the way back. Do it a couple of times, that should clear it for you. If they do a routine maintenance, it shouldn't be that bad. You shouldn't have to uh, use water. If you can compress air, it should be fine. A question for you. Are these are these workers hanging in the building all the time? Are they still doing that? Are they are they putting uh, all the down or what? Uh, they're hanging. They're, they're hanging all the time. Okay, are they in the bag? I got a guy down on the team. Yeah, they have to go through every turn. Make sure they work. We replace all the parts every turn. So those those workers hanging in that building, they get dirty. Oh, they're they're going down. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I have sometimes they put glass in the bag over and try it out. Yeah. You used to go, I don't know if you do that anymore. Uh, that, 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 sometimes. Yeah, for some reason, I don't do this cold pool of water. Yeah, the yeah. water is not bad. You fall in the bag. You get the bag, fill it with the bag. Don't be guys cold enough. Well, like, it'll be white. Oh, you were saying it. Well, I think the reason why he did that is because, you know, you, you put a bag over there, you got a lot of humidity in here. Now you got that humidity sitting in there, now it's eating away at this. You know, next time you take it out, it's all rough. So, he probably just mentioned that, yeah, don't, don't do that. Just either take it down. You know, you got that guy down there, he's replacing orifices. This is about every turn. This is big house. Does he have a filter on him? Yeah. They have a sock on it, but it's just almost standard procedure for this guy. He just hmm. pulls around the wall, arm, every turn, and takes orcs out, puts the orcs in. Sorry, but these are actually the legs don't make you buy them. No, they're curtains. They're, they're, they're curtains. You know, you know, power them in. Okay. Because we, we do see that on certain places, you know, where the, where the ventilation's not as good, it's like a natural building. We see the building on the roofers a little bit worse than another. Now the, the, the filter, when when he has the filter on it, does he go through it and take them off, flatten them off, get the dust off? No, he just hides it. Yeah, so, I mean that filter is basically just starving that you know. You just put them on too. Every time. I mean, yeah, they gave this guy like seven bucks or six bucks a, a brewer to make sure they're wrong. So I'm gonna wait, no, what you could do is go through there, pick five gallon buckets and Take the filters off, stuff them in the bucket, fill up water, let them soak, yeah. and let them get cleaned out. Just dry them out for the time. Yeah. I usually recommend just taking them off, give them a good pat on your leg, and get all the dust off of it. That'd be good. Unless the grid cake's on, then, like John said, soak them in water, rinse them off, give it a good shake, let them dry it, air dry it. Once it dries, put them back on, almost brand new. Usually after they've been hanging for four months with big pigs in there, they need to be washed out. <laughs> now I heard people say, "Well, I, I keep, I keep, blow, I blow my brooder. I blow it on the clean. Yeah, you blow the top off. That doesn't do nothing. <laughs> Down the air. This is where all, this is where all the, the magic work. No? Yeah, I blow my needle off. I blow the top off. What's that do? Yeah. So I mean, this is where you know you got a lot of dust put up in the comb. You, yeah, you're gonna show in that lifespan of the comb. It's gonna, you're gonna break that beam. You're gonna burn the tip, now you're gonna have to replace it anymore. Okay? The, the thermocouple. You know, if you get a lot of dust all up on the outer foam, now you got a lot of heat trapped in here. Thermocouple is gonna go out. You're gonna have to replace the thermocouple. So, just by saying, yeah, I blow the top, I blow my boot I use the leaf blower, I blow it off. Uh, you gotta go through and blow the top away. In here, through here, a couple of times, that should definitely get all the. the uh, <laughs> now, if you do have an inner cone that does need to be replaced, you will get a new inner cone and a gasket. All right? That is recommended to replace the gasket whenever you do an inner cone replacement. Uh, that's